Japanese meta, man. Let's just be clear here. We, we got a bigger view of all the cards. The Japanese meta is exactly going to be the American meta, in my opinion. So let's talk about this. It's interesting, we saw uh, the Charizard here going for the Hero's Cave. This Pokemon gets plus 100 HP, making that Zard 430 HP to KO. <sighs> what? Now, I'm surprised this happened in a Pidgeot deck, because then I just go for the Pidgeot, right? I just fall, kind of chase these guys out of the game. Or your Rotoms. So I'm surprised he's uh, playing this... In a Pidgeot deck, I think this in a Bibarel deck would be insane. Because then the opponent is chasing what one prizers. It's not not good enough, right? So he's chasing a Bibarel, or he's getting out a Charmeleon, or he's eating your Radiant Charizard, but he's not getting the same value. He still has to somehow deal with your Charizard on board. This is such a cool idea. The Hero's Cape. This can definitely work. I think it's better in a Bibarel deck. Because then you just give them the option of going after a Pidgeots or a Rotoms in a Pidgeot deck. But very interesting idea. Also, what I'm noticing here is Jirachi is probably going to become obsolete. There's only two cards, two, two real, like it's a Sable Eye is your real problem. Because Screamtail is not going to be meta. Cressela is not going to be meta. Literally, all it is is you're doing... You're just shutting down the Sable Eye. So we're going to probably see a much smaller number of the Jirachis being played in every deck. Literally nothing else gets shut down. Maybe a Metachomp loop as well. You're shutting down a Metachomp loop. But the Metachomp can just uh, bring out whatever he wants to loop. And he can deal with that that way. So it's an interesting idea. But I don't think we're going to need Jirachis anymore. I am honestly don't think we're going to need them anymore. I mean, it's going to be very... It's, it's going to be literally for one matchup, which is the Sable Eye. And as long as you learn how to play that matchup, you're going to be fine. Now, there is also some people that will say you're only playing one prizers with Bibero. So you might want the Jirachi to protect yourself. We'll see. We'll see. It depends on how prevalent the Lost Zone Sable Eye deck was going to be. But look at this deck here, guys. I think this is going to be a very big meta choice, guys. This is going to be a really strong league uh, challenge deck. Basically has an answer for every situation. You might not even need to run the Iron Bundle, but you still get an answer to every situation. Raikou is here. Get a get, okay on and your Chain Pow is big, guys. Uh, you really don't play the Roaring Moon till turn, till final turn uh, to get the KO on the Charizard. So what you do is you chase, uh, you you KO first one prizer. Then let's say you KO the Charmander in the front. You go to five. Then he becomes a Charizard. Then you... Uh, then what you could do is you could just punch the Charizard down or you can start attacking the back row. So let's say you get uh, one prize again. So now you're at four. With at four, then what you're going to do is the Charizard still active. So if you can KO the Charizard or bring out an Iron Hands and KO the Barrel gets you to two. And then that's it. One Roaring Moon. Uh, KOs that Charizard 100% no matter what, no matter what, it's absolutely KO'd, and there's the value there, you win game, like this deck has an answer to every situation, literally has an answer to every situation, Sableye's in uh, tough po positions, mid game positions you Sableye, you can also Sableye late game, but your late game is probably going to be Iron Hands, Roaring Moon combo, uh, you could Greninja, you could also Charizard. There's so many options in this deck that you could run. You can literally run Charizard in this deck. You don't have to Greninja. Um, and yeah, Crisis Punch is actually going to be a serious thing on that Cramorant. That's why I'm telling you, this is going to be a really good com uh, deck to counter Pidgeot Charizard. Which makes sense why Pidgeot Charizard is about to be, got, like, slowly moved out of the game. They're just... Radiant Char... Uh, sorry. Pidgeot Charizard is just not going to be the deck to... To be playing you're going to be playing uh the barrel charger and we're looking at it right now look at this deck running the three three be barrel i think that's going to be the lineup you want i guess this pidgeot is for stall meta because you really do lose to stall even do you, though you're running the prime catcher you still lose to snorlax stall and i'm gonna keep saying this anybody who plays snorlax stall thinking he's a tactical genius uh i have a uh, 
I have some stocks to sell you, brother. Come. <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> it's the worst. It's the, literally the dumbest deck in the game. People thinking they're tactical geniuses playing the game with the Snorlax. Leaving one Snorlax on board, <laughs> thinking you're smart. This is funny. Uh, but yeah, anyways, so... Cryptomaniacs deciphering is the reason we're gonna start playing the barrel now and you're not gonna hurt yourself as a Charizard going to the barrel because of Cryptomaniacs deciphering Gives you literally everything you would need You're on two of it in the deck and now you're safe. You don't you're not worried about cram one-shotting your Pidgeots with the one-punch crisis and ending game you are going to be worried about Roaring Moon though, but honestly, if you make Zard your main attacker at that low number of uh, prizes, you should be fine still. Uh, now, you are susceptible to be taken out by, for example, Iron Hands pulling in the right card, uh, like pulling in a barrel, knocking it out for two prizes. But this is what the Ionos are for. Now you know why people run for Iono in barrel. Now you know why there's four Ionos here. What you do is at that turn where he only has one prize or two prizes left, you Iono him out of the boss. You Iono him out of his bosses. So he's forced to deal with that Radiant Charizard or the actual Charizard in the active. He's forced to deal with that and that's impossible to deal with. Unless he pulled out a Roaring Moon somehow, it's impossible to deal with. So the deck is gonna work. The deck is gonna work. It's gonna have multiple ways to win the Bibarel Charizard deck. It's gonna either rely heavily on the Radiant Charizard towards the end of the game and just only have one prizer, so you have to basically KO this guy two or three times, or the board two or three times, so we get some time. Or it's just going to Iona you out of the game, late game, and force you to deal with a Charizard that's 330, that you could mm, potentially make it 430 HP, and you were forced to deal with that because you just got Iono to two or one. That's what I'm gonna. That's why the Iono number is huge. I I totally understand why Iono is at four instead of Arvin at four. That makes total sense to me. You want the opponent to not be able to play the game. Really cool idea, guys. We're still gonna lose to the Snorlax stall because they literally just play two Snorlaxes and that's it. That's it. They are literally it. You're gonna get. You're gonna be able to bring down the opponent down really heavy. You're gonna be able to knock him out, get some KOs. You're gonna get to two prizes with the Snorlax stall, but you'll never get to three. Oh, uh, sorry, you never get to zero. You'll never ever be able to get to zero prizes. It sucks. Look at Eerie. Some uh, some control here. Your opponent reveals their hand, choose up two item cards. You find there and discard them. This is a little bit scary that we're getting the discard meta back. Actually, a lot of decks are running one off, at least one off Eerie. I don't need it because I don't care about what you play. Uh, what I, my idea as a Charizard is to play the game better than you. Like my my Pokemon are supposed to be more valuable than your Pokemon. But then we look at this Vulpix, which is insane. I can, literally, as a Charizard, I cannot deal with this in any way. I could maybe combustion uh combustion it like uh here with the charizard with the charmeleon no not this charmeleon i'll show you another one this no where's the other charmeleon it's right here i could combustion it or fire blast it but that's gonna take three turns and he just ko's me and i can't deal with it i cannot deal with it during your opponent's next turn prevent all damage done to this pokemon by attacks from pokemon that have an ability so, I, th I don't know if you can even cancel and cologne it. One thing you could do is move it away from active, then bring it back. But that's not enough. So, we literally cannot deal with this deck. Yeah. So, I'm really mad that the meta is uh, moving towards uh, a position where I cannot deal with it. I literally cannot deal with this meta. What happened here? 
I, I'm so mad that I can't I can't do anything against this meta. Also, he's running Lost City, so if you do have anything that can KO it, he just gets rid of it once and that's it. <laughs> He'll never come back again. Oh, wow, this is such a strong deck. This is kind of a meme deck. It's only good against meta decks, I guess. But my god, man, if he starts Arceus and turn one Vulpix, I cannot deal with it. Because it takes me some time to attack into the Vulpix. Now, if he if he misses a Vulpix, for example, turn one, this is amazing. I can deal with the Vulpix. We're just going to focus on bringing out bosses and get only the Vulpix. That's fine. But if he doesn't even... If he doesn't miss, turn one, plays Vulpix, Arceus, and Arceus gives uh, energy to Vulpix. And then my turn one is Evo, TM Evo. That's game over for me. I can't deal with the Vulpix. So it sucks... That there's decks like that, they literally just run Arceus, Vulp Vulpix, that's it, that's the deck. It sucks that that's how strong that deck is and it actually counters my, me completely. But, uh, wow. And then this is the deck I think we're going to see the most in this meta, finally. I think this is the deck that's going to win most North American regionals. I think this is going to be the deck you're going to try to beat. If you can get a certain... Because it can become a one prizer. So if you can get a certain uh, flow of prize mapping against this deck, you're going to be able to win. But this deck is going to be able to prize map really well. One thing you could do is try to go after the Archeops, I guess. Once you get KO2 Archeops. It's going to take you some time, but once you KO2 Archeops, you really do slow down the Sensino. I mean, that's going to be your number one way. Is to counter catcher or boss in your the Archeops and just take them out of the game. It doesn't even matter... If he uh, if he brings them back, it doesn't matter. He can never play them again. So as long as you just take him out, you're, you're going to be fine. But yeah, um, uh, it's an interesting deck. I think we can still deal with it as a Charizard. I think what you do is you turn one. Let's say Lugia attacks into Charm Charmander, takes it out. Turn one, you Archeops, KO the Archeops with your Charizard. Turn two, he only gets to add two energy. So his Lugia is still on, but he's and he's giving Mencino some power. Turn two, you bring in the Archeops again and KO it. Now he doesn't have any more energy to give out. So once you get rid of that Lugia, and it's okay to lose the Charizard, because if you lose Charizard, now you can one-shot Lugias with a Choice Belt or Vitality Belt, because you go to three, he go, your opponent goes to three. So once he goes to three, you one-shot this Lugia, that's game over, because he doesn't have any more Archeops. Cincino only has four energies max on it uh potentially six and it can ko your charge up you're gonna be you're gonna have one more uh, prize and you'll be fine as long as you iono your opponent out of the game you'll be fine so there is ways for charizard to deal with the lugia it's gonna be a little bit harder you're gonna have to go after our caps almost like the chien pao deck you're gonna go after his uh, support units here this is gonna be a little bit easier to do because once you take out our caps that's it uh, whereas his uh, Chien Pao, Frisier Backs can come back. Archeops don't ever come back. So you literally just focus on Archeops. And that's it. He's forced to play one energy per turn. And you should be fine after that. So there is ways for us to play against every top deck. Except the Snorlax and the Alolan Vulpix. As a Charizard, you cannot play against these two decks. Uh, which is uh, heartbreaking. I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry. I'm not going to lie. I'm so sad. And then we also have a Giratina deck here. It's kind of genius to go maximum belt with this Giratina deck. Get that first KO on the charge on. But once they get that KO, I literally just one-shot them. I can also one-shot them with Radiant Charizard. And a Choice Belt. 280. And so I, I get it. They're getting a lot of KOs. But they're not going to get the value I'm getting from my KOs. Because let's say he KOs the Charizard. Gets me to 3. Or let's say he gets me to 4. I pull out my Char Char Radiant Charizard, KO this Giratina, and then he KOs the Radiant Charizard. But because he doesn't have a two prizer on board, he cannot win game there. So I get to either KO the Arceus next turn, or another Tina, or the Iron Leaves, and I win game. It's 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 not bad. It's it's really not bad. Now the Giratina is gonna activate immediately turn one, and I'm surprised now I'm running Arvins to pick up his maximum belt. But we're going to be fine. I think we're going to be fine. Now, I do see a lot of Iono, so that's going to hurt a little bit. Also, there's a lot of Eerie. Oh, my God. Bro, if he gets rid of my rare candy, we lose game, don't we? <laughs> that's, 
Bro, I, I'm not ready for the new meta. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, as a Charizard player, I'm terrified. Interested in your opinions, guys. What do you think is going to happen uh, with this meta?